Okay, let me start. Um, my name is Thomas Bogendorfer, and I'm working uh, in the kernel team for storage and network, and mainly doing the network driver part and InfiniBand driver parts. And today I'm talking about a small project I did um, to get SLE running on a switch. So, so I first, this whole thing first started when I began working at SUSE. There was the idea to buy a 100 gig switch and one of the ideas was not to buy a, a ready to, to work with switch, but a so-called white box switch. White box switches are basically just the hardware and you put your own operating system on it. There are some commercial ones available from other companies and the idea was to use SLE or some other Linux operating system for it. We didn't do that at that time. Well, we didn't buy one and because we got uh, a, a switch from Mellanox uh, as tests with the, the reason for, for having such a, such a switch is uh, to be able to test all the 100 gig Ethernet cards uh, with driver for it. So we got a, a, real a real switch from Mellanox with their operating system and it worked out to be real usable for testing. At a later stage, I was in a, was in a, in a, a conference call with Mellanox and Mellanox asked about, is it possible uh, to get something from you which we can use uh, on our switches and gave to give to customers something like an SDK for switches? It didn't come out m much uh, commercial-wise uh, out of that conference call, but we already had a spare switch, spare Mellanox switch, and I asked to send them, send it to me. So I got an, an Mellanox SN uh, 2100 switch, which is a small switch, but it has 100, 100 gig Ethernet. When I connected it to the serial console and power, I observed this is basically a PC, it's starting a BIOS, and it has a Pixie boot already running. So I added the machine to Authos and installed Sleep 15 on it, which worked out pretty well, at least from the point when you're looking at the x86 hardware. So everything is working there. Okay, fine. Uh, then I tried to use the switch, uh, looking at it, and it didn't work out pretty well. There were some missing pieces in SLE 15, so I put on my to-do list for SLE 15 SP1 to backport more stuff needed to use um, the Mellanox switch chip, which I did. So SLE 15 SP1 has basically everything I needed, uh, kernel-wise, and there were some things to solve which I already noticed uh, when running SLE 15. Um, one of the problem was the switch driver complained about the firmware. Um, the firmware for the switch is not loaded um, by the driver, but it's run out of a flash chip attached. I guess it's attached to the, to the switch chip or don't think it's integrated. And the driver couldn't um, update. The, the driver wants to update it, but it didn't work out. So I found a wiki from, I guess, Mellanox guys, and there was, an, was some instruction, and I was able to flash a newer firmware, which then the driver could upgrade to, to the firmware it wants. The second problem I had to, had to uh, fix was there's a platform driver which complained about uh, not getting uh, the right interrupted ones. And, well, the, the problem is that the ACP code of the BIOS um, doesn't really allocate the, the interrupt correctly. So um, even Mellanox use it on their own operating system 
are using a command line parameter to do ACP no IRQ, um, which then solved the problem. So that's that's my workaround. I tried to to code something and that worked, but it's too ugly to present to anyone now. So in the end, or right now, I'm 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 ready to use uh, the switch as a switch with sleeve 15 SP1. That's the hardware, so that's how it looks like. It's just half size, it's not an, a full 19 inch, it's, it's just half size. It has a nice CPU for, for a switch. I saw switches with some ARM something 32-bit, but that's an, uh, it's, a, it's a four core into Atom core. It has enough memory, that's cool. Um, it has a, well, sleeve-wise, a little bit small um, SSD. Um, that's it's swappable, but it's a uh, it's a short form factor, so I didn't have a, a bigger one. But for for testing, 16 gig was enough. Yeah, the interesting thing to use it as a switch is the Mellanox Spectrum switch chip, which is connected via PCI Express, and it just has four lanes and it only has a PCI Express Generation 2, which means uh, five gigabit per lane. Um, but that's a limited, not a limitation of the Spectrum chip, but of the Atom uh, core or the Atom uh, chipset. Yeah, then for a switch, that's the uh, six, it has 16 QSFP 28 ports, um, which is a standard standard port for 100 gig Ethernet. And it was one management gigabit Ethernet port, which I used for Pixie booting it. So, um, what do I need to use the Spectrum switch? Well, I already told you um, that there there's a firmware which is distributed via Linux firmware, uh, Git. Um, yes? And the actual inbound um, network to that uh, processor? Uh, yes. Uh, no, um, <laughs> <laughs> I'm I'm a little bit confused. One of the RJ45 is the serial console, and the other one is the gigabit Ethernet port. So um, we need a firmware, which we already have. It's already included in SLE 15, and we need the uh, driver, the Linux driver for for the switch chip, which is called MLX SW, and. The even nicer thing, it's developed by Mellanox, and it's an upstream kernel, which makes things easy, really easy. And that driver uses switch dev as an offloading framework. Now, probably some of you have heard of switch dev, but what's, what is switch dev? How does it work? The concept is um, knowing other switch drivers uh, it's it's really different, but looking at it, it makes sense. So every switch port, every outside switch port, is represented as a net device. So uh, if you don't have any fancy UDEF rule, every port of the switch will show up as ETHX. Number in, in my case, it comes up with ETH one to ETH sixteen, and we already can use that. So I could do an IP address, IP link stuff. Uh, I could do even TCP dump on those links, on those net devices, on those interfaces, which is cool. Well, wh one but, but uh, if you, you can't expect any good performance on it, um, that's why I um, wrote down the, the number of lanes, how it's connected. It has, from the PCI Express, uh, only 20 gigabit minus uh, any overhead from the protocol. So no way to get any 100 gig traffic over such an interface. That's impossible. So, and that's the fancy part, uh, which is what SwitchDev provides. Um, if we add such a net device, to a bridge, the driver or the, sw the switch dev framework will give an, 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 call, an call to the switch 
driver, which then will offload the frame forwarding to the switch chip. So that's the only way to get real performance out of it. And the other part which switch it does is um, there are callbacks uh, which the switch driver calls, so we um, get the forwarding database updated. So every learning from the switch chip, which does it on its own, will be uh, done by a callback. So if you do a, a bridge show FDB, it will be up to date. So um, yeah, the other nice part about uh, the switch dev design is we use basically normal tools for configuring the switch and debugging problems like where is this MAC address located? So probably all, uh, most of you heard of at least four of them. So IP is common one, the bridge one, ETH tool. You can, do, uh, can look at the QSFP module information via it so you know which cable is plugged in where. Um, the TC tool for configuring priorities and another feature inside the TC tool for the switch is configuring uh, monitoring. So you can, um, for tracing traffic pass through the switch, you can um, add a monitoring interface which is done via the TC tool. And the last one, that's probably the not that known tool, that's DevLink. Um, that's, well, don't know how old it is, but it, it, it seemed rather new and I didn't know it before. Um, and, and I need it, or it, it, it's, it's needed for, for the switch if you want to split ports. Um, a 100 gig ethernet port uh, consists of four lanes. It's basically like PCI lanes, just a little bit other um, electrical, electrical stuff. And it will be combined to one, one, to one 100 gig um, link when used as 100 gig. But it's possible to split them into four uh, separate um, interfaces. That's where you need the DevLink tool for. Okay. Let's do a small example or it's it's a real example I'm using. That's for, for one of my tests. So we have a server which is uh, connected to port SVP1. I said uh, it's usually it's ETHX, uh, but I have a, um, a UDEF um, rule which uh, renames it to SVP and the number of the port. Uh, the reason behind that, that, that uh, UDEF rule is if you split a port, it will also um, add the, the needed uh, port names. That's a nice thing. Uh, so we have SVP1, there's a server connected, and we have SVP, uh, SWP16, um, which is uh, the, the uplink port to another switch. And the uplink port provides th uh, three different VLANs, 1, 11, and 3210. And the goal is um, to have the server on port uh, SWP1 see all traffic from VLAN 3210. And we start with creating a bridge. That's how the whole thing works. And we want to be VLAN aware, so we have to enable VLAN filtering. Then we add the port where the server is connected. We add the port where the uplink switch is connected. We add uh, VLAN, VLAN 11. Uh, we don't need to add VLAN 1 because that's automatically um, added when created. And uh, VLAN 3210. So that's for, for, for the uplink. And now um, the tricky part, or well, well tricky part, the bad thing about auto adding something, uh, we first need to delete VLAN ID 1 from the port of where, where the server is connected. 
to add the um, port VLAN ID and mark uh, every uh, and send out every traffic from VLAN 32 10 as untagged. So the, the server just uses interface without having any need for configuring VLANs. So we bring up the bridge, we bring up the first port and the second port, and that's all. So that's that's working. That's what I'm I'm using what I use for some tests. And that's about where I'm standing now uh, in the project. So for me, it's it's uh, it's useful already, and I'm looking forward to use more. Uh, to do more test cases with it and see where there might be something still missing. So I already have a few pieces missing. Um, the first one um, is that's open network install, install environment only. Um, that's used for, I guess, for all the white box switches. Um, that's an, 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 an open source based environment um, which is put by uh, on to the switches by the manufacturers of the switches and it provides a way to roll out software on such switches. It even has some some recovery methods so if something messes up um, you can go back to the ONI and install it again. So I didn't. I I, I only looked at at, um, at the documentation. I looked at the sources, and you basically need an Ubuntu or Debian system um, to do to, to to get it working out of the box. And I skipped that because at that point it wasn't that interesting. But it's doable um, with with Sleeve for sure. For, with OpenSUSE, I guess as well. Um, so that's doable, and depending if this is getting more serious needs from, from product-wise, from SUSE, that's something to do. Well, I have some question marks. Better way of configuration for me using a shell script is just fine, um, because it's not that different from entering commands into a, a, a Cisco-like command line and saving that well, okay, um, so usually switches have a command line interface which, well, is used, or some web interfaces, That's that could be something which is missing. Um, I guess uh, doing that via sold is something p other people, especially cloud people or SUSE manager people are interested. So that's some things which come up to my mind and Listening to the micro OS uh, talk from from uh, Richard, I this morning I had the idea maybe I should try it with micro OS <laughs> <laughs> and see. I, I don't expect any any big problems, but well, it's a, it's an interesting way to approach micro OS. So that's what probably what I'm doing next. So that's basically my talk. Yeah, <laughs> questions. Is it working? Yeah. yeah. Uh, first question would be rather out of curiosity. Uh, you used uh, the bridge with uh, two switch ports, which means the switch uh, you only had the control path, so that the packets are uh, forwarded uh, solely by the switch itself, mm -hmm. do not go into CPU. What would happen if you had, say, two switch ports and one other network device? <laughs> Um, I haven't tried it. I, I just read in the documentation that it doesn't work. Ah. So you can only add switch port to the bridge. I, I don't know how this is this is prevented, but that's that's an uh, that's an open thing I wanted to look at because, because if I want this is something people doing virtualization yeah. would be really interesting in. Yes. Probably. Yes. Yeah. Of course. Yeah. Playing with the um, Taurus um, Omnia and Taurus Mox um, switches, I think that's using a Marvel chip, and there I have experimented with a bridge that spanned both the 
switch chip connected ports and regular PTH port, and it worked. I did not do any performance analysis whether that you know moves you know um, counteracts the the offloading to the switch chip or something. But in theory, it should be possible. Okay. Well, uh, what I was mostly interesting in uh, interested in would be if it was uh, smart enough to uh, forward the traffic between the switch ports only in the switch, but the traffic that would need to go into the. I, I would itself, expect yeah, a, that it but works but that way, or I hope it works that way, but I need to test that. Oh, and another question was if you did already uh, uh, did some experiments with uh, more recent kernels, uh, meaning mostly uh, with the perspective of SLE 15 SP2 being 5.3 based, because I know that Melanox was very active in uh, upstream and did a lot of work on switch dev and on devling and things like that. So <laughs> The, the the version in 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 SLE uh, in 15 SP1 is about 5.0 5.1. That's uh, what I already back. Four twelve. Hmm? Sorry. Uh, kernel four twelve is SLE 15 SP1. Right, but the driver is out of ah, yeah, five dot zero five dot one above that range. I yeah, can't I remember uh, out of my head. So I already backported lots of stuff. So um, well, I will test, of course. SP2, and I wouldn't expect much problems there. Have you done any form of uh, benchmarking against the default um, OS that the system shipped with versus no. the SLE one, just to see? No. Uh, well, I, I wouldn't expect much difference because I I it's the same hardware. Right, but from software side of things, they yeah, could sure. be tuning that needs to be done. Yeah, no, I didn't mm -hmm. do okay. any benchmarking. I just, I just checked that the offloading really works, so I produced enough traffic, um, or there was enough traffic going through, uh, which was impossible to do via software. Did you test if it's possible to use the interfaces as if they were kind of local interfaces, like adding an address to them and, and listening? And yeah, I, I did. That was, that was, in fact, that was the first thing to do. So I just put an IP address in it and tried to pinging uh, something. And yeah, that's working. You had a number of like Outlook topics on the, the final slide. Um, Oops. Yeah, yeah, that one. So, um, are you in touch with someone about those topics? No. Okay. Maybe now someone will approach me. I don't know. So it's more more uh, um, proof of concept that it's possible with that type of switches. If you look at uh, at smaller switches, that's probably not that not that easy. I had a uh, conversation with Dennis this morning, and he has some some closed source and where you have U-boot and UBI and, uh, and then everything with, uh, gets messy compared to that <laughs> approach. So and I recall that um, I think YAST uh, LAN module at some point got some fixes to configure also switch devices. When you think of better ways of configuration, are you thinking of a special YAST module to do so or like some command line tool? Uh, Any direction or like what team? As I said, I have a shell script is a fine configuration tool. For you, yeah. <laughs> but a shell script. So <laughs> but you know, looking at customer, I don't know what it, they it want. It needs to be persisted across reboots, right? Yeah, that's that's a, that's an in fact that's important. Yes. So no more question. Thank you for listening. <laughs>